Good afternoon, Easton. I'm Carrie Rapolo, and this is the Shovel Town Scoop. Today is Monday, April 11th, 2016. We're going to recap some meetings from Town Hall. During last Monday night's Board of Selectmen meeting, DPW Director David Field discussed the recommendations for the management plan that he is updating to the existing plan going out to 2019. This plan is based on available funding and tweaking it and maintaining the roadways. Let's take a look at David talking about that. Our, in the first year, we've made a couple adjustments of adding some streets in that were deferred last year. We had to defer Church Street that's been put back in. Uh, and uh, Dean Street was taken out, or taken ahead, and, and put in last year's plan because of the utility work on Church Street. Um, so our plan uh, calls for about $1.2 million in the first year, and then about $500,000 a year in funding in years two and three. Uh, the problem that we have with that is that if, um, this year we're going into our third year and our last year of our road bond money where the town appropriated $500,000 a year for local road projects. That's helped out a tremendous amount. We were able to do uh, close to $2.2 million of road work last year uh, between the Chapter 90 money, the supplemental Chapter 90 money, and the road bond money. Um, that helped us maintain our, our road surface rating uh, where it is at 73. Uh, having the reduced Chapter 90 money going forward, along with the TIP projects that we have to design, we have about $600,000 worth of design work we need for the Elm Street uh, intersection project, the Union Street project, and the Depot Street project. So we'll have only about $500,000 a year to spend on actual pavement improvements in those outlier years two and three. Without additional funding, that will cause our road surface <laughs> rating to go down. So we'll be fine this coming year, but if we don't do something about some funding or find some additional funding, uh, our road surface will go down and we'll have uh, uh, less performance on our roads. Also at the Board of Selectmen meeting, Dan Smith made a last minute decision to add a $170,000 line item to the fiscal year 17 override budget, which would then add two curriculum coordinators at the elementary schools. This would ensure that a cohesive curriculum is being taught across the three elementary schools and would meet a standard instruction in each classroom. Assistant Superintendent Leisha Cabral explained to the board exactly what that would entail. So let's take a look at that. We've been working hard to coordinate our curriculum. We call, the, we call it the understanding by design, backwards design process. So we've spent two years coordinating that throughout the district. Um, so on paper, it looks the same. However, any professional reading something, you know, we talk about this with standards all the time. If you say, um, analyze the text features, we're all teachers, we know what that means, but what does it mean in this classroom? What does it mean in this classroom? What does it mean for a second grader to do that? What does it mean for a third grader to do that? And so while we can have those conversations and we can put a lot on paper, it really needs to be seen in practice. We have three phenomenal school leaders at the pre-K to two level mm -hmm. who have done an extraordinary job of coordinating as much as they possibly can across the three schools. But again, when it comes to curricular and instruction oversight, they're simply not at those buildings to be going through the classrooms and seeing the classes at all three schools. That's a very critical component that's missing. So while we have control over some things and we've made really great strides and we've seen the fruit of our labor in that sense, which is really compelling us to further want to continue this work because it has been really successful in coordinating the curriculum, coordinating um, our, our strategic planning, coordinating our procedures and policies. We would really ex like to extend that to instruction, which yeah. really is the critical component of education is so the instructional piece. So I see, it, I think we all see a deficiency in, in the fact that they're not being, the optimization, the utilization isn't, isn't where it could be. Um, I think the business case, I, I believe the business case for bringing a cu curriculum coordinator to the table and adding it because there is a measurable return on that investment uh, should be deliberated and discussed here as a part of the operational override. Chair of the school committee, Fred Islib, discussed how the Department of Secondary Education has changed special education funding criteria. Eason is currently receiving three streams of funding from Title I and will now receive only one stream. Financially, that has some repercussions. 
on how much less Easton will receive. Let's take a look at the school committee chair discussing the $100,000 deficit in funding for special education for fiscal year 17. My name's Fred Islip, I'm the chairperson of the uh, school committee. I also live at 23 Flyaway Pond Drive. Uh, one point I'd like to make regarding the $100,000 for the security audit, I do think that it does make sense to take that because there are some one-time items in that and move that to um, the fall special time meeting as a capital budget item. At the same time, what I and this is just information that has come to us, to the committee, to the district in the past 30 days, and we have been working diligently with the state to understand what it means, is they have, uh, the Department of Education, Secondary Education, is changing the criteria to how we receive our funding for special education. We were receiving three streams for Title I funding, and as a result of the change, we are now only going to receive one stream. And what it means financially is we're going to receive $100,000 less. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually let Dr. Cabral, the assistant superintendent, provide you the details, but my point being to you and to let you know is that the $100,000 we're, going, we're still going to need $100,000 as a result of the shortfall that we're going to receive from the state. This is another example where mandates come in from the state that are underfunded and just tell the districts to figure them out. We are one of five districts in the state that are going to be impacted by this change by the Department of Education. As the Board of Selectmen listened to concerned citizens in support of the override funding for the town and schools, Chairperson Dan Murphy then called for the vote of the override budget with a four to one in favor of passing the override budget to go to vote at town meeting on May 16th. Let's take a look at the vote. Total override request of four million, Connie, you correct me the second I make a mistake, which I undoubtedly will. Four million, four hundred sixteen thousand, six hundred seventeen dollars. That's correct. Total. <clears throat> Subtotals, 419.790 Public Works, 229.38 Police, 102.169 Fire, 2.408 uh, School, sorry, I skipped 30,820 Health and Community Services, with me so far, um, 234.900 mm -hmm. for benefits and insurance. Yes. One million reserves. So again, the total being four, four, one, six, six, one, seven. Correct. Thank you. All right. All those in favor? Opposed. Motion carries four to one. Yeah. There were other meetings that took place during the week. On April 5th, the audit committee convened where they discussed other communities' scope of audits, three-year salary comparison for unions and other employment contracts. So Stonehill College also hosted the Board of Selectmen debate with incumbents Dottie Fulginity and Dan Smith, where they squared off with challengers David Mills and Jason Parks looking for seats on the Board of Selectmen. You can find that on our website, which is eastoncat.org, and watch the debate. And of course, they will be repeating on our channels here at the times listed above. And also, the uh, Finance Committee met on April 6th with Jim Lee from the Community Preservation Committee. He also discussed the fiscal year 17 budget assignments. And lastly, the school committee had voted unanimously pushing back the start times of Easton schools. Here they are at the new start times that will be taking place effective in September of 2016. So all of our aims in middle school go to 755. We have Richardson Olmsted at 840. And the elementary schools, which is pre-K through second grade, will go at 910 in the morning. All right, so we have some events coming up here in Easton. Let's take a look at what is coming up over the next couple of weeks. All right, so we have Calling All Teachers, a free night out has been planned for you over at the Knights of Columbus on Foundry Street. You can join other teachers for some pampering by local acupuncturists, Reiki and Shiatsu massages, and so much more. You can RSVP because the space is limited to the phone number listed here. Okay, also the Children's Museum Father's Day 5K race is coming up and they're looking for volunteers. If you would like to get involved with the race, either by contributing to the planning or by running in it, you can call Paula Peterson, her phone number is listed here, or Judy Copley, the race director, or you can also email paula at thechildrensmuseum.org. 
And we have the OA Tempo event coming up on April 28th, and that's going to be from 7 to 8.30. You've got the middle school and high school jazz bands. And then we have another great music event coming up. Let's take a look at Uma talking about that. There is also a great um, movement, I think, coming on, which is at the back of your binder. I'm going to hold this up and hope that the TV catches it. This is the Cuisset Garden Music Series. This is not a library program. This has been started by community members. There's going to be a series of free music concerts in Cuisset Garden that is motivated by the community. And the first one is May 18th. It's going to be a lovely jazz show called the Riverboat Stompers. There you go. Come with the blanket, come with the cam a family, come with your picnic, have dinner, and then just relax. Then on April 30th, we have the School on Wheels outrun Outrunning Homelessness 5K over at Borderland Park. You can always sign up on their website, which is listed here. And then we have Family Steam Night on May 20th over at Richardson Olmsted School. That is from 6 to 7.30 p.m. And then we also have the Fun Run over at the Sheep Pasture. That's a 5K fun run. You can go to nrtofeaston.org. That's on May 21st and sign up over there. And then you can also save the date for the 6th Annual House of Possibilities Gala to be held at the Gillette Stadium Putnam Club. Thursday, June 23rd from 6 to 9, the House of Possibilities makes a difference for children, adults, and families living with developmental challenges by providing much-needed relief in a stimulating and nurturing environment. And then let's take a look at some upcoming programming here at ECAT. Then we have next week is School Vacation Week. And ECAT is running a vacation workshop that is free to the Easton Middle School students. And that will be from Monday through Friday, 10 to noon. If you would like to sign up, you can contact Kim Pincus. Her email is listed here. Or you can also give us a call at the studio. And that should do it for this week's scoop. Let's take a look at Representative Joe Kennedy speaking to the Easton Middle School students and teachers at last Tuesday morning's STEAM event that Selectman Dan Smith had coordinated with some behind-the-scenes interaction with the children. Have a great week, everybody. The topic of discussion today is an issue uh, in an area that is a major importance to me and something I care an awful lot about. Um, I actually was, my undergraduate degree was actually in engineering, um, so I happened to fit into that STEAM category. I loved math because you could get the right answer. I stopped liking math when I could no longer get the right answer. Um, so I went off and did some other things instead. Um, but I have to say, the method of thinking and the analysis around engineering I still find extraordinarily valuable. Nice to meet you.